got ourselves another video from Mr. Randy. This, this is called Every Isekai and Fantasy Anime Coming Out This Season. It's a little late, but hey, let's get it. It's a bit late since I was over at Anime Expo this weekend, but here's every isekai. Anime Expo is like Anime Con? Where a bunch of people that don't shower and cosplayers show up and talk about anime? Is that what Anime Expo is? I've, I've never been to one. Kai and Fantasy Anime coming out this season. There aren't too many returning like how there was last season, but to quickly cover those, there's the second season. Announcement Expo? You, you just kind of go there and they just show you like... They just show you like trailers and stuff? Like, oh, ReZero is going to be airing, you know, October, stuff like that. It's, it's, it's not a con, it's more like a presentation by Corpo? Huh. For Tower of God, Part 2 to Nier Automata, Season 2 of Sengoku Yoko, Season 2 of Our Last Crusader, The Rise of a New World, we gonna then get there. We Fairy gonna get there. Tale, The 100 Years Quest. Yo, I hear Fairy Tale kind of popping off. Is, is this true? I hear a lot of people are, you know, watching this shit right now. I thought that Fairy Tale was, like, looked down upon. I thought people hated this shit. Like, it came back and it's, it's, it's kind of trending. I'm sure plenty of you have already started Tower of God Season 2. Hell so, yeah. aside from the massive shift in... Where's my cut content and news? I need my views! You need to make the videos! So then I can farm the videos! I need my views! Story with a brand new cast. You can attribute the change in art style to the change in animation studio. Instead of it being telecom... Fairy tale is like SAO, just popular to hate on? Really? Hmm, then maybe I should take back my hate for fairy tale because I've never seen it, but I like I shit on it just for fun Now I feel like I'm an SAO hater and as an avid SAO fan now. Yes Sword Art Online is fun to watch. Fuck you. We're on season 3 right now. Come check us out on Patreon and Twitch Like okay, I won't shit on fairy tale then until I watch it Animation film. It's now a studio known as the answer studio a group whose previous works mostly involved movies like Garden of Words and Crossroad, but they did work on Season 1 a little bit. Okay. It'll be interesting to see if their talents can translate over to a TV anime, but from the looks of Episode 1, it seems rather promising. Episode 1 felt like Tower of God to me! Uh, other, other than, you know, a completely different cast of characters and not seeing the regulars that we knew back in Season 1. It just feels like Tower of God to me! Thing already. Now. All the other sequels are direct- <laughs> One second? Sing already. Now. Now? All the others- <laughs> Lisa censoring Tuvia. This anime is so tragic. This anime is so tragic because, uh... Near Automata, like, we were covering it for season one, but then the amount of scheduling Issues like just kill the hype and now it's on season two. Is like anyone even still watching it? If I'm gonna experience this, I'm, I think that we should just play the game instead, man. Direct continuations to their counterparts, except for Fairy Tale, which is more of a side story never explored in the main story. Okay. Now that the main story is done though, this is a whole nother adventure for Natsu and his crew to go on. A brand new mission to seal a Yo, maybe we should start watching Fairy Tale. Maybe we should do every Fairy Tale opening ending reaction and we wait to see if the Fairy Tale audience comes around. <laughs> Away the five dragon gods. Because, like, I really wanted to cover, like, it's hard to get into a long running shonen when you're like a variety weekly seasonal anime channel. Fun fact if there's any aspiring anime reaction channels that haven't started yet, don't do what I'm doing. Do not react to random seasonal weeklies. Don't do it. That's the fastest way to kill your channel before you even start. I only got here through brute forcing community series after I realized what to do, okay? Focus on like every opening or ending reaction for one specific series. One popular one. Naruto One Piece, Fairy Tale, whatever. This is what I did on my second channel, Kaka TV2 for Beyblade. And then the algorithm hits, you get that audience, and then you only make videos on that topic. And that's how you grow really fast. Fairy Tale, I, I don't know. I, I was talking about like, you know, we, should we do Hunter x Hunter, Black Clover? But well, like, Fairy Tale's on the table too now, if it's actually good. It's a whole new anime being done by JC staff this time, spearheaded by the same director responsible for the previous seasons. So, though the animation and art style might be different, the overall tone and feel should be similar to the Fairy Tale from 2018 and before. I don't even know. Moving on to the more new anime, first and foremost uh... we have Suicide Squad the Isekai. And I'm glad that we checked it out. I love the ending. Amanda Waller dancing? <laughs> that shit hilarious. I still think that's the best ending of this anime season. Unfortunately, the fall off is crazy in terms of viewership. Because I think it's as simple as 
every new season, people see a new title, right? Days with my stepsister. Oh my god, viral. You know, Senpai is a trap. Oh my god, viral. Right? Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad's getting an anime? Oh my god. They check out episode one, then they realize, oh, it's just not much what I expected other than that. And then it kind of just dies down. Isekai Suicide Squad was kind of that. I don't think the anime was bad. I thought it's like a 6.5 or like a 7 out of 10 so far. There's no interesting, like, super big brain plot, but it's interesting enough to watch. And it's just Suicide Squad just fucking shit up and having fun, but it's just not, you know, what every audience that watched episode one was, I guess, looking for. So the drop off, it makes sense. It's pretty much exactly what you think it is and looks to be about as good as an Isekai with DC villains can get. You've got Joker. I say it looks better than most Isekais we've watched recently, bro. Like, Suicide Squad? Like, like it's better than Failure Frame. I can tell you that much. Like, Failure Frame, bro, the CGI difference is fucking crazy. But, like, I think this shit's better animated. Joker, Peacemaker, Harley Quinn, and more. All starring as the main cast in what's pretty much your standard fantasy Isekai setting. They're not reincarnated or magically teleported, summoned. but are instead sent in as a forward task. Yeah, not really summoned. That's, this, yeah, you, like, sent. This is a new type of isekai. Because usually it's reincarnation or you got summoned from the other world. But here, we're pushing dudes into the other world. Huh. You didn't summon them, you just sent- Yeah, Gate. Gate- Oh yeah, true. Gate did that. Gate did that, true. Task Force. One responsible for securing an area that the Argus facility can conduct research and acquire resources. It's actually very much akin to that of a gate type situation. Yeah, gate. There's exactly. of course all the standard stuff the Suicide Squad is known for, so aside from some unruly characters, bombs in people's heads, and just all around craziness, what you can look forward Katana. to the most is Wit Studios' amazing animation. Even if the story turns out to be a dud, the quality yeah. of the fights are gonna be spectacular. They're great. It's good to watch. Next, we have Isekai Shikaku. And this is doing pretty well, but we've only had one week of it, right? Again? Episode 1 is projected to always do well, right? And then what matters is the true viewership after people, you know, actually see what the anime is for. So right now it's looking pretty well. I enjoyed it. It's like, I didn't, I didn't think it was going to be like a comedy. But it's just like, dude wants to die. And it's just like a comedy based around that. Otherwise known as no longer allowed in another world. This mixes things up by making the protagonist somewhat different. Mainly through the fact he's an author from the year 1948. So, whereas every Sachan. other isekai protagonist immediately recognizes this type of situation, the lack of video games, anime, or manga means getting isekai'd means nothing to him. True! I never thought about that, because like, you know, the whole meta now is like, Oh my god, this is an isekai! They might even like break the fourth wall and say, No way! I finally got isekai'd, right? But like, this dude, 1940s, huh? No. He's instead this despondent writer whose only happiness comes from finding the perfect place to die. Yeah, that's double death. The thing about trying to do so in this world, though, is that no matter the situation, he always seems to come out okay. Making it this comedy where all our protagonist wants is to just drop dead, but for some reason simply can't. That coffin, can't. man. The studio behind this was also responsible for Isekai Oji-san. Uh, such a... such a... An anime that got butchered by scheduling again. Bro, this shit was good. It was fun to watch. And then the scheduling just like destroyed all the momentum and interest the show had near the end. Bro, this shit straight up aired throughout like three separate anime seasons. Do you understand? I, I don't think I'm even exaggerating. Maybe it was two separate seasons. But the delay on this finale was insane. And so I imagine it'll be able to capture the- Like, straight up, we have a playlist on this channel, by the way, of Isaka Oji-san. Now, it started off by like a later episode because my channel, first channel, got deleted. This is my second channel. But then, I still try to cover this shit. But like, it was like an episode every like two months. And by the finale it dropped, I was like, I don't even care anymore. I don't think the audience even cares anymore. I forgot what happened. Fuck this shit. I was just so frustrated. I didn't even watch the finale. That's what's going on with that playlist. The comedy just as well as it did in that anime. Now, the next isekai goes by the name Failure Frame. Oh, and it lives up to its name, baby. Failed frames on site. Dude, episode one, I was playing defense on this for the animation quality because if you looked at the half, first half of episode one, I still stand by it. I thought the CGI was pretty decent. And then the second half, it was like, uh-oh, uh-oh. And then the second episode we watched yesterday was like, oh. And CGI, I don't mind it but the way that it just keeps going back and forth between 2d and cgi 
it just feels like a whiplash every time. It's just like, whoa, Jesus Christ. It's just so jarring. And then that pulls the immersion back, and I'm just fucking roasting this shit and making fun of it. And, it, and that is the content in itself, but I don't like it when CGI is so... Like, it shouldn't be a whiplash. It should be more smoother. Good CGI should make it seamless when you watch 2D and the CGI is presented to the point where you don't even think that it's CGI. I became the strongest and annihilated everything with low-level spells. From the title alone, it sounds rather interesting, and it's an isekai that's actually very similar to Arifuretta. Anski. You see, an entire class is summoned into a world of fantasy, and yeah. every student gets to be a hero except for one. Our main character. Of course. He unfortunately isn't powerful at all, and because of that, is banished to the dungeon. Well, that's the trickiest thing, because, like, again, I keep bringing this topic up. If we're not that powerful, if debuff is not that good, why did the goddess intentionally use some kind of sacred, like, debuff counter magic when bro, like, tried to attack her in the beginning? That will still be, like, the most important thing in determining if she's lying or not. Was it just a passive? Maybe it was just a passive, but like you still need that passive if you're saying debuffs in this world are trash? Like the- apparently the debuffs are fucking trash and, and you still fucking needed that? I don't know. I feel like she's lying, especially because like she said low success rate and debuffs are trash, but we're like landing every debuff. That still hasn't been explained. Maybe it's like a gimmick. Maybe what the goddess said is true for most people with debuff powers, but our main character is a fucking main character. That's why the same rules doesn't apply to him. Who knows? Because of that, is banished to the dungeon by the goddess who summoned him. Well, as it turns out, he actually does have a power that's quite useful, and he ends up using it to make it back from the dungeon. Sleep paralyzed. After poison. which, the story turns more into a revenge plot. Yeah. So, if you like edgy power fantasy similar to Adi yes! then Failure Frame might be worth checking out for you. Yes. Something a bit more tame is the slice of life isekai, a journey through another world, raising kids while adventuring. I. Enjoy it. It's fun to watch. It's just soul healing, just wholesome. Man, when the kids started giving us a head pat last episode, I was like, aww. <laughs> I'm just like, aww, my heart's melting. It's an isekai involving exactly what the title states, making this story all about childcare. Our protect. More like child labor, bro. These kids going to fucking work. They better pay their, you know, their fair share of rent and food. Agonist is reincarnated into a dangerous forest, only to find himself confronted by two very powerful children. Water gods children? They're a pair of what I assume are orphans who he ultimately decides to take care of himself. The story then follows the adventure they go on, and that's pretty much what you can expect from this isekai. Another- There's nothing, like, crazy or special about it. It's just- I don't know, just slice of life cunny moment. It's just fun. Just chill show to watch. Just decent on you know, YouTube too, which surprised me. I, I, I didn't think that um, people would uh, enjoy this type of reactions, but like plenty of people, I guess, kind of enjoy that. You saw someone saying Failure Frame Anime is a better adaptation than Furuta. We don't know that just yet. Like, we, you're comparing two seasons worth of content versus fucking two episodes in two season one, right? So we gotta let that shit cook. Her fantasy slice of life isekai is Dahlia in Bloom crafting a fresh start with magical tools. This is the one where the girl got dumped immediately, right? And she's gonna be like her own independent woman who don't need no man. After dying from overwork, then experiencing back-to-back -back tragedies after reincarnation, Dahlia finally decides to live for herself. Okay. She takes the skills she learned from her magical tool-making master and uses it to start- I just realized there's no subtitles the entire time, I'm sorry. <laughs> no one said anything. No one said anything. ...her own company and focus on her craft. She then encounters numerous challenges, but it's along the way that she learns to become more confident and live life the way that she wants. Well, no, the subtitles don't matter because, like, yes, these are subtitles for us right now, however... When this video gets uploaded, this is also going to have its own subtitles, so the subtitles were always there. It's like subtitleception. It's weird. Let's do. So, all in all, it's a story centered around Dahlia and the magical tools she makes. It's not a romance or a lengthy adventure, but rather a very literal slice of Dahlia's life. Okay. Next, we have quality assurance in another world, and though similar to Sword Art <clears throat> Online in premise, being stuck in a video game isn't all there is to it. These are the two isekais that we didn't really check out. The quality, and then there's another labyrinth one, right? There's another like a labyrinth one, like managing labyrinth kind of deal. Eh, didn't really check it out. Is this show, is anyone watching this show? Should we check it out? I'm not sure. The game they're stuck in is actually a buggy mess and the main character's job is to debug everything. 
It's a self-imposed role that he QA. hopes will help free his friends from whatever game-breaking glitches they're trapped That's in. That's good. So, whether it be clipping through walls or navigating missing texture areas, this isekai's bread and butter is its approach to game development. It's not just a side element mentioned in the background, but is rather the core theme all the way through. So, to me, it's a genuinely interesting premise we've actually never it's seen pretty in unique, yeah. before. Whether it's good or not is yet to be seen, but from a creative standpoint, at least it's something different. It does stand out. Now, the last isekai before getting into all the fantasy is the strongest magician in the Demon Lord's army was a human. It is alright for a bit. We dropped this because, I don't know, it just felt... It's alright. It's like a 6 or 7 out of 10. It's, like, it's probably like a 6 out of 10, right? Nothing wrong with it. I just have so many different projects I need to focus on that's more expected from my audience. Not many people want this, but a lot more people want the other community series that we're waiting on. I, I can't be just doing weeklies every day, you know? Like, there's days where it's just like fucking four or five weeklies, bro. I, sa I literally sacrificed the cartoon channel and delay a video there so that I can make fucking five video weeklies instead of four because there's that many stuff. I, 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 I can't justify that. A story not so focused on the isekai part itself, but rather the position the character who got isekai'd made for himself. By hiding the fact he was a human, he was able to cement himself as the Demon Lord's strongest magician. So it's him using his immense power and modern day knowledge to essentially drive back the much larger force fighting against the Demon Lords. Unfortunately, the source material and trailers aren't very promising, but perhaps <laughs> there is some fun to be found from this. Maybe. Now. That's pretty much it for the isekai, but in terms of just straight up fantasy, there's actually quite a few of them. Alright, isekai portion is done, now it's time for native isekai. A lot of which seem rather interesting. So, first we have Wistoria Wand and Sword, the manga from 2020 now finally getting its anime. This shit peak. You, you're not watching this? You're missing out. You need to watch this. Like, if you, if you enjoy power fantasy, if you enjoy... Main character being looked down upon in like an academy setting, school setting by other people because he sucks at one thing, but actually he's really OP at the other, which is pretty much the most important thing. Like, this is the show. Bro, like, episode one lived up to the expectations that I had. And then I'm even more happy that like a YouTube audience exists. Because like, even if a, an episode is enjoyable to me, it doesn't necessarily mean that the YouTube audience will like it, but it's just like, it's fucking peak. Yep, that much out there, exactly. It's a straightforward story similar to Black Clover and Mashal, where in a world dominated by magic, our protagonist shines with his swordsmanship. Let's go. He may not be a capable mage like everyone else, but where he lacks in really magic, well he more too. than makes up for with the sword. So as he strives to reach a height others usually attain only through magic, our main character has to do so by hunting monsters. That's the only way he can advance and become one of the truly strong. The credits, right. It's nothing too different Farming from monsters. what we've seen before, but the level of struggle and perseverance seems very reminiscent of Danmachi. To me, it's... Because it's the same author. He knows that, right? Seems like a show that knows exactly what it is and what to focus on. The trailers alone already look exceptional, so even if the story isn't that complex, so long as it's portrayed well, Wistoria Wand and Sword could be... I don't need a complex story. Just give me the hype. Just give me cool moments to give back at the people that's being shitty to us. Give me cool moments. That's it. Power fantasy. Don't I, don't, I don't, I don't need a complex story. You can give me a complex story if you want, but like, just because the story is complex doesn't mean that it's fun. Just, just make me have fun. That's all I care. Be something special here. The director's also the same person who brought us Black Clover, and the other anime he's worked on have been nothing short of exceptional. Okay. So, out of all the anime I've talked about this video, this is the one I'd recommend watching the most. Based! Based any news! Real recognizes real. He knows this is his choice of this season. Ah, yeah, Wistoria. Of all the anime this season, there's a lot of good ones, but Wistoria, like, top three easy. Most. Next, we have I Parry Everything, which, as you'd expect, is a story about a character who, well, parries everything. It's, it's... <laughs> not only does he parry monsters, he also par like, you'll see in this. If you watch this, it's not just, like, monsters attacks that he parries. He, like, parries, like, girls' request for, like, not a date, but, like, other people are like, Oh, please, you need to take this reward. He's like, not nah, parried. I like this. It's, I don't think it's, like, the best anime I'm watching right now. It's probably like somewhere around 6 or 7 out of 10 right now. It's still enjoyable. I love the concept of he only parries. One trick pony concept is very compelling to me. There is a whole political conflict going on around him too, but for the most part, our protagonist is set on becoming an adventurer. 
poop shoveler. He spent the last 10 years becoming super OP. 14 years in total. And has now finally resurfaced to find himself involved in something more. The rest is him using his power to solve whatever conflict, and that's pretty much what you can expect from this. Okay. In a similar vein, we have the Osen Newbie Adventurer, which follows the- Osen Newbie. Not Osan Newbie, Osen Newbie. Oh, is that anime good? <laughs> I think the Boomer anime is fun. I, I enjoy it. It's, again, it's just another trashy power fantasy. There's nothing like special about it other than the main character being like older to represent like an aging anime audience that they're trying to tap into. I enjoy it. It's very fun to watch. That same storyline of an OP character just wanting to become an adventurer. Before, he'd never gotten the chance, but with the way he was raised, he'd become far stronger than anyone. Fast forward to when he's 30 years old, and it's now that he's finally setting out to become an adventurer. Yeah, and then you got all these fucking Zoomer kids just calling us out. They're like, what is this 40-ish old man doing here? It's like, come on, man. A job most commonly fit for those way younger, but Rick Gladiator is here to prove otherwise. What a name, Rick Gladiator. It's basically him showing up whatever elite adventurers underestimate him switching things up with i like the older main characters too though it's, it's just a really nice message to send right just like you know even if you're like in your like late 20s or early 30s or like even your 40s right like it's never late to start something and like this is the advice that i give to a lot of people as if, if i'm in any place to give advice but a lot of people i notice are full of doubt it's like oh you know I'm like doing this job, but I don't like it. You know, I'm a little bit old, but it can, should I go back to school to learn this thing? Everything is very context different. But if you're in a situation where you feel like you're getting older and you want to try something new, but you fear the judgment from other people because you're attempting something new at that age, don't let that fucking stop you. Always chase after your dreams. And just remember this. This is like a really liberating mindset. When I heard this, it changed my mindset of like, Basically, I was like reading this subreddit and this is where I got the wisdom from. I was like reading the subreddit. I think it was like a computer science subreddit and someone was like, you know, I, I'm working in construction right now. I'm like 35. I want to go back to college and get like a comp side degree. Now, the job market is different now. So you're kind of fucked if you do that. But the advice given there was like, OK. And, and, and the question was like, is it too late for me? Right. In four years, like I in, in, do I have time to spend that four years in school, even though I'm like in my 30s or 40s? And the uh, one dude replied with. Listen, whatever you do, time is still going to pass. In four years, you're still going to be alive, probably. And it's up to you to decide, are you going to be do doing what you're doing right now or something else? It's like, never worry about starting something late because like time doesn't give a fuck. It's still going to pass whether you like it or not. So why not try something different? You could be trying something different and in four years, your life entirely could change. Or you could just be in the same spot after those four years and be stuck with regrets. So just be aware that time is going to pass regardless of what you do. So why not just fucking try it? It's more of a sci-fi fantasy. This right here is why does nobody remember me in this world? It's a This one didn't air just yet, right? This is episode one is dropping, I think, this Saturday. This is also pretty highly anticipated, I think. Modern fantasy taking place after humanity's victory in a massive conflict against five rival races. Okay. Such a victory was only achieved because of the hero, so when the world That's is overwritten and the hero man. made absent, our main character finds himself in a timeline where humanity didn't win. It's then up to him to inherit the hero's powers and fight for humanity's victory all over again. This isn't an anime I'd say I'm personally invested in, but if you're looking for a more post-apocalyptic one, then this might be for you. I'm interested. If you're looking for a regular modern fantasy, then a nobody's way might be more of what you're <laughs> looking for. It Lolly leveling! First two episodes was all right. The people enjoyed it on the YouTube side in terms of performance. A lot of people are actually mad about episode two. People are saying like, dude, they cut so much shit. Apparently compared to the source material, I guess episode two is really skipping over a lot of stuff. And that's a little bit worrisome, but uh, we'll see. It's literally modern day Japan with the addition of explorable dungeons. Kind of like Holy solo leveling, leveling minus all the cool stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so our protect. It's like solo leveling minus all the cool stuff. Way to sell the show, any news? Goddamn. Nest is a regular high schooler and low level dungeon explorer, and it's one day that he chances upon this really rare item. 
A cart that summons mythical beings to fight alongside him. Gods! Demigods! This makes it easier to explore dungeons, and it leads his life towards all sorts of new adventures. There is a succubus, That's man. That's what I assume is going to be the bulk of the story, so it's a pretty standard fantasy just in Japan instead it's of an right. evil setting. That's all right. Next, we have several lighthearted comedic fantasies coming in the form of Dungeon People, Plus Sized Elf, and The Magical Girl and the Evil Lieutenant. Okay. Dungeon People presents a different take on dungeon exploration in the sense that it shows how it's run from the other side. I am gonna skip the Plus Sized Elf portion in case I get in trouble. And then we have this. I, I, all the other stuff is not that, you know. Well, there is one isekai, actually. There, there is one isekai still, right? There's, there's this one is isekai where. I'm not sure if it's an isekai where it's like furry dominated and the girl gets discriminated by the furry, right? It's worth checking out this season. The last two are Delico's Nursery and Bye Bye Earth, where one is a vampire murder mystery with a subplot of childcare and the other about a lone one, human one, in a one. world of anthropomorphs setting out to find. Yeah, you're like the only human in like a world of furries and like they like hate you. We might check it out, I'm not sure. And her true place in the world. The former is only fantasy because of the vampires. Dude, the, the vampire show, this shit straight up looks like a husbando fucking nursery. Like, shit looks like... It looks like BL Yaoi fan service, but like, it's, it's all the husbandos, you know, daycare for babies. Anyways, that's <laughs> all the isekai and native isekai happening, you know, this season. If there's any titles that, you know, please go give Mr. Any news a like on this video, sub to his channel if you haven't. But like, let me know if you... Of all the shows that we've watched, you know, and haven't watched, like, let me know if there's anything that we should be checking out.